So, we're focused, we're contextual, we're clear, we're aligned, and we're believable. What's next? You have to close the deal. <laughs> this is the most overused slide in conversion optimization, so I couldn't bring myself to do it. Uh, I would hate myself if somebody had taken a photo of that. <laughs> Let's look at it this way, okay, the tipping point. This is where I'm thinking about it and then I get over here. So how do we do that? We have stop words, which stop you from doing that. And then we have closers that are going to help you do that. Oh, so let's, uh, let's think about a webinar. So if you're a content marketer, you put on webinars. What do you think the number one question is in webinars? Okay, yeah. Are you going to send the recording out afterwards? Even if you tell them you are. Everybody still asks this throughout, throughout the session. Um, so that's something you've learned. This is a post of experience. You've learned that you can now bring back and put in your landing pages to make them convert better based on knowing this is what people want most. So here's a landing page for a webinar. It's awful. They do it, they talk about it all the time. So this is when it is. That's great. But well, it's, it's really hard to understand. Their call to action is I agree. <laughs> Do I agree that EU data protection regulations are, I don't know, what am I agreeing with? <laughs> it's, it's terrible. I don't want to agree, I want to register. So that's, a, that's just a bad CTA. But they're missing the point. This is the most common kind of design for webinar registrations because of the way the system is. Uh, again, they don't say, at least it says register now, but there's nothing there about this most important thing. So, a safety net statement. If you're doing anything based on urgency or time, you need to give someone a way of still participating. So even if you can't make it, sign up anyway, we'll send you the recording. Okay, so now we're applying this most important question. This will make your the number of leads you get go up. Another way, that's emergency. So what we do the day before, we send a last chance email but at midnight, it's manual, at midnight we switch out the CTA to say it starts in a few hours, add some urgency. This is push someone over, 90% more people, just by, just by adding that little, that little tipping point helper. Yeah. You know this guy? Uh, so you've got the conversion. What do you do now? <laughs> I actually got up when I was four years old, I got up on a stage at a wedding apparently and I was doing this and my, my, someone said, look at that guy, he should be called Oliver. And I was like, ah, he is. That's, 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 that's weird. That's not so uh, I'm not an orphan, as far as I'm aware. Uh, here's a different one. So here's a banner. Okay, this is for registering for a webinar again. <laughs> this, is, this is terrible. These are, I mean, the tension ratio is terrible. There's all this stuff to do here, but required information. Every single field is required, apart from this one. Why take those away and put brackets optional on there? That's going to work better. And then, after all this work, they give you a cancel button. There's an opt out. Yeah, I'm going to do it. And submit. This is my biggest pet peeve in conversion. Using a, a button that says submit, your button should complete the sentence, I want to, I want to download your ebook, I want to sign up for a free trial, I want to submit, I don't know, if this is mixed martial arts, maybe that's relevant, but it's not relevant to a webinar. So what happens afterwards, okay, I, I went through that, I, the conversion has happened, Registration confirmed. Thank you for registering. You are now registered. You will receive a confirmation email with detailed information about joining the event. The event will start out, blah, blah. Please join the event on time. Fuck you. I will show up whenever I want. It's none of your business. <laughs> and there's a done button. Yeah, another button with no purpose. So here, here's the extra point. Right, you've got conversion. This is what we're asking someone to do next. This is a great idea. You have to do this. 
Invite a friend into your friend's email. I'm not going to let you spam my friend. It's <laughs> a terrible suggestion for what I should do. So continuance. This is designing experiences that leverage this post-conversion opportunity or instill some momentum so that your campaign lives on, becomes evergreen. Have a quick wait. So here's a webinar registration page. Thanks for registering. You should follow us on the blog too. Sign and subscribe to our newsletter. No harm in asking. Out of 2,500 registrants, 40%, that's over 1,000 people just for asking. Right? People like to be led, tell them what to do. Another one here. You've got an ebook, you can get it with an email, or you can change social currency, you can get it for a tweet as well. The benefit of this, but 20% of people will do this, but then you have momentum for your campaign. All these people are tweeting about it, so their network is going to start coming back to your page, so it adds that momentum. So are we done? Okay, talked about delight at the start. What does a delightful landing page actually look like? Oh, uh, these guys again. Okay, so it's not fair for me just to bitch about them. I should fix the problem. So, next day flyer delivery. If this is the headline, next day flower delivery, I'm like, yes, I'm in the right place, they can solve my problem. Love these guys already. Now, what type of flowers do you need for tomorrow? Now we can segment, because we've established that you have them, which kind do you need? You're probably thinking, ah, oh, attention ratio has gone to five to one. That's okay in this instance, because there are two things. There's what I need and when I need it. So I've solved the when. Now it's okay to segment, because these all have the same campaign goal. So that's okay. If it was a Valentine's campaign, then the attention ratio is wrong. It should just be going to Valentine's flowers. Salesforce, very com complicated product. I know that their number one goal is to get you to sign up for a demo because it's a complex system. So that's, that's the first organic link that takes you to their own page. The first paid link brings you here. This is great, they're doing the right thing. This is a, a nice landing page. But it's aggressive, Salesforce demo. Well, I want to know why I should care first. So I'd redesign this page. Take that away. I'd move that up. So now the value drops there. I can come in and go, huh, this sounds great. I'm interested. This is what it looks like. Now I would put that over here. Because this part is about the product. This part is about getting a demo of the product. So it's nicely segmented. I'd also make the call to action bigger and actually say what it's going to do and have some contrast. Now this is attention driven design. A lot of these, there's been some tests done where with these trust symbols, if you have too many, it makes it look like you're trying too hard. You should like, really, really, you should trust me. I have like, we, we're so trustable. But often it, it makes it worse and under here we have lots of stock words, share, rent, trade, third parties. Take that away. That's a great landing page. This is the kind of thing you should be aiming for. <laughs> <laughs> so, takeaways, remember. <laughs> the sound quill, right? It's, it's, it's probably easier to remember without that. Uh, toe for grace, think about toe for grace. This is the context, this is the coupling between your ad and your landing page. You want this to be a really tight bond so all the people can run across this bridge. And you blow it up so they can't get back. So. <laughs> uh, remember not to put disruptive things around your call to action. We're at a conference. What happens at conferences or parties? You, sh you meet people. We've all done this or experienced this. You meet someone and you're going you're to shake their hand and they go, it's okay, my hands are wet because I just went to the bathroom. <laughs> I was happy to meet you, but now all I can think about is the fact that you just had your hand on your... <laughs> no, no thanks. Remember this, and all these testimonials. <laughs> Trademark that. Uh, and always go for the extra point, because you can. It's free, it's extra, it's extra free stuff. So that's how we make delightful learning experiences. And all these millions of terrible experiences, we need to get rid of that. Because the more great experiences there are, 
the happier people will be and the more likely they'll be to engage with your ads because they're not going to be so used to these crappy experiences. So if I can leave you with anything, it's that we should be making delightful planning experiences. Let's make marketing delightful again. Q&A, um, if anybody has any questions for Ali. Are your slides going to be downloadable? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we all get those shared. <laughs> yeah. yeah, hi, I do have a question. Um, so I noticed a lot of the landing pages that you showed were a single page environment. Yeah. And I'm noticing more and more landing pages having things like tabs, dynamic content. What are your thoughts on stuff like that? Is that, can that be appropriate? Does it work? I mean, I'm noticing that these landing pages are almost turning into microsites. Is that, how, how does that fit with your philosophy? <clears throat> that, can, that can definitely work. Depends on the complexity of, complexity of your product. You'll see as well, a lot of sites, uh, pages are introducing navigation. But it's, it's a long scrolling page, it just brings you down. It doesn't take you away, so that's okay. Because you're being helpful. You're saying, this is available here, but you're not letting them leave. So that's okay, and if you're doing e-com, we all know, like every time you buy something technical, there's the tech specs and all that kind of stuff. That's tried and true, it's proven to, to be required. So yeah, having some tabs, like say at the bottom of the page with extra information if you need it, like on demand, that's good. So you talked a lot about um, search and just people having um, a known intent that you can, you, can, you can focus around keywords, you can optimize the landing page around yeah. an essential question that you know that they have. How about around social um, targeting where you might be targeting around behavioral or um, they haven't necessarily started out with an essential question, uh, optimizing a landing page to grab people and move them over and land them in, in something that's delightful. Uh, so if so what would be the context of them seeing something? Or like, well, so you might be targeting someone on Twitter based on something you know about them or right, based right. Based so on you're doing an some an email list or interests right. that you know that they, they have. Or yeah, again, you need to, that's where the context comes in. If you're designing something from a social uh, link or something or a paid search thing, there's not much context there. So. You have to couple that experience as well. So if it came from Twitter, follow along with that little 140 character experience, match some of the design maybe, or give them a welcome. Thanks for coming from my Twitter ad, or whatever that may be saying, ad. But welcome them in a way that they understand that it makes sense. Because yeah, that is quite a low, they haven't searched for something, they've just seen it. So you have to kind of calmly let them in. Definitely don't be aggressive there, because yeah. Social doesn't convert very well, generally, so you have to really work hard to soften that blow for social. Ali, can you define specifically what a dedicated landing page is for folks who maybe never heard that term? Yeah, it's, it's a page designed exclusively for your campaign. It didn't exist before. You made it just for that. It's not attached through navigation or anything to your website. It lives in isolation. It'll be on your domain, so there's that trust factor, but you can't go anywhere else from it, just so you can really measure the impact of it. So it's, yes, yeah, dedicated to your campaign. Can you uh, just speak a little bit about um, mobile landing page experiences? What the expectations should be there? Yeah, so uh, what the expectation would be for a mobile landing page? Well, you need to design for fat fingers. You know, you need to make it, like, your, your call to action, your buttons, I mean, should be especially big on mobile. Um, there's debates over whether responsive is the best way to go for conversion, because with a spot responsive, you're recreating all of the information on your, on your page, but sometimes you need to design a mobile experience that's very targeted to that. Uh, it depends what your campaign is. I mean, click to call is very important on phones because you're using it for a different reason. Uh, if you have a product that costs money, uh, you have to sign up, go through a sign up process, often sending people to a free account, maybe with less 
fields. You have to kind of forego the fact that you want them to pay for something, get them in for free, a simpler experience because they're on their phone. They maybe don't want to pay with, you know, put their credit card information there. It's a, it's a hassle. So, yeah, it really depends on what it is you're, you're offering. Hi. Um, actually, I was having a conversation with Joanna at Coffee Hackers about oh, this, yeah. and I'm curious what you think about it. Um, but it seems, and you didn't really talk about long form sales pages, but um, I was just saying to her that it, it feels like design is somewhat supplanting coffee, or it's overriding it a bit. You know, this, this we've got to make everything look really yeah. cutting edge and. Um, and so I was just sort of curious what your feeling is on that and how yeah. it's converting, you know, you, you as shouldn't, opposed to old school kind right. of. Right. You shouldn't let designers take over marketing. <laughs> it's, it's not, they, they, they're not marketers, so that's a bad thing. Conversion center design is not just visual design, it's, it's doing the whole thing together. So you need to focus on the copy, find ways of illuminating where, how good your copy is. Sales pages work, they're ugly, but they work. There's a reason for that, you know, it's a, you're telling a story. Um, you know, sometimes you have to do that before someone's gonna actually buy something from you right then. They're often a little bit sleazier, but you know, they work, they work for a reason, so if that's the kind of thing you're doing, they, I, I'd stick with it, I would. Yes, you should make it more professional sometimes, but not always, I mean, it depends on your target market. Do they care about that kind of thing? You know, if you're getting a sham wow or a slap job, Context of use is the important part. <coughs> Being able to put yourself in the position where seeing how you're going to use that icon, that's more important than the rest of the design. All right, that's a wrap. Just want Ali to uh, give that acronym to us again. I like talking. <laughs> How's that from? N S A M C W A D L P. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Dot com. <laughs> <laughs>